Hello my scholars, this is my school YouTube channel and my name is Frank. In today's video, we are going to be discussing about gas laws. So relax, do not go anywhere and we'll be right back. You are welcome back to my school youtube channel like i said earlier on in today's video we are going to be discussing about gas law so before we begin with the lesson let's quickly run through the objective for today's lesson one explain using the ideas of the kinetic theory of gases a the variation of volume with temperature of a gas when the pressure is kept constant b the variation of pressure with volume of a gas when the temperature is kept constant Two, explain Boyce's and Charles' laws of gases. Three, deduce the general gas law from a given mass of gas which obeys Charles' law. Four, solve simple problems involving the gas law. And five, identify and use instrument for measuring pressure. So let's begin with the lesson. Um, so basically, uh, gas laws, these are laws that explain the relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature of gas. The law shows and explains how the property of a gas behaves when any of the property changes. So to study in detail the behavior of a gas, three quantities of the gas that must be taken into consideration include temperature, pressure, and volume. When these three related quantities are being studied, one is normally kept constant while the other or why the remaining to vary. For example, in studying relationship between volume and pressure, temperature is kept constant. In studying the relationship between volume and temperature, pressure is kept constant. And in studying the relationship between pressure and temperature, volume is kept constant. So let's move to the next slide. So basically on the next slide, we are going to be discussing about the instrument uh, for measuring uh, pressure. Of course, in our previous video, we have explained a little about this. So, uh, basically, today we are just going to go through again uh, the formulas for calculation when you are given the instrument. Okay, and take note the instrument for measuring pressure is known as manometer. Okay, and this manometer consists of a U tube that contains either water or mercury. Okay, so let's begin with the formula for calculation. So basically, we are going to be using three cases. Okay, and those three cases are depicted, each one of them are depicted with diagram, as you can see on the screen. Okay, so when mercury level S is below level above Y. So as you can see in the diagram, look at the mercury level here. Okay, so you can see uh, the uh, mercury level X, okay, in the left arm. Of the manometer that is below the level of mercury in the right arm of the manometer so what you simply do is you draw a horizontal line from x to the left arm of the youtube to cut the right arm of the youtube and mark that point as s remember this story that pressure at point s is also equal to pressure at point y okay and remember that the pressure at point x is due to the gas pressure Okay, it's due to the gas pressure. Remember that the left arm of the manometer is actually connected to a gas supply, while the right hand is exposed to the atmosphere. Okay, so the pressure at S is due to the gas pressure, right? And pressure at Y is due to atmospheric pressure, since that part is not connected to anything but exposed to the atmosphere. Then plus the pressure due to the height of mercury H. Okay, so having said that, so that pressure at Y is equal to atmospheric pressure plus pressure due to the height of mercury column H. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. Now, since pressure at S is equal to pressure at Y, so that means everything you have on the Y side, we can equate it to the X side. Okay, so in that case, gas pressure, which is actually the pressure at S, will now be equal to atmospheric pressure plus pressure due to the height of the mercury column. So therefore, we say gas pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure plus pressure due to the height of mercury column. Now we have the second case. So as you can see in the diagram below, 
okay so in the figure below the mercury level in both arms of the u-tube are at the same level so in this case the height of the uh, the height of the mercury column is equal to zero okay so in that case the only pressure that is acting is the atmospheric pressure and that atmospheric pressure is acting at point y so going by the theory of our calculation which we have used earlier on we get that we will get that pressure at s is equal to pressure at y right but remember that pressure at point s is due to the gas pressure now pressure at s is the pressure from the gas okay then pressure at s is equal to gas pressure let's move to the next slide okay and pressure at y is due to atmospheric pressure only okay so that pressure at s is equal to pressure at y so that gas pressure in this case okay the case that we're considering which is case two is equal to atmospheric pressure then we have case three so case three is when the level of mercury on the left arm of the manometer is more or is higher than the level of mercury on the right hand of the manometer okay so the mercury level in the right arm of the youtube is below the mercury level in the left arm of the youtube so remember our theory uh, pressure at s is equal to pressure at y but pressure at s is due to gas pressure plus pressure due to the height of the mercury column h okay so pressure at x is equal to gas pressure plus pressure due to height of the mercury column h right but pressure at y is equal to atmospheric pressure but basically what we are looking at here is just how to calculate gas pressure so let's move to the next slide so that we can see uh, our final result okay so gas pressure in this case will now be equal to atmospheric pressure minus pressure due to the height of mercury column okay so let's begin with our gas laws properly so we'll begin with the first one which is called Boyce law so the Boyce law simply involves change in volume of gas with pressure at constant temperature okay so this law states that the volume of a fixed mass of gas varies inversely as each pressure provided the temperature remains constant so we can state this mathematically so mathematically v which is the volume of a fixed mass of gas varies inversely okay as the pressure of the gas provided that temperature is constant okay so that v is equal to k over p of course what we have here is just a relationship okay showing us a relationship between the volume of a fixed mass of gas and the pressure okay and the relationship is that of inverse of course we can't work with this okay in order for us to calculate any of these variable we have to introduce a constant okay so once we introduce a constant then our proportionality symbol will change to equals to okay so that is exactly what we have here so that v is equal to k over p right where k is constant or of course if we make k the subject of formula we're having k to be equals to vp okay so that pv or vp or pv okay because it's commutative so there's no issue with that so that pv is equal to k right or we can say p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 so take note of this formula so p1 represents the initial pressure of the gas v1 represents the initial volume of the gas okay p2 represents the final pressure of the gas and v2 represents the final volume of the gas so we can uh, verify Boyce's law experimentally okay so this is how it goes so take a syringe we all know a syringe so take a syringe with a plunger and trap a fixed mass of air inside okay so by pushing the plunger inward the volume of the air decreases resulting in an increase in pressure by pulling the plunger outward the volume increases resulting in a decrease in pressure this experiment verifies Boyce's law so it's as easy as that so let's move to the next slide so on the next slide is just the uh, setup for the experimental verification of pressure of Boyce's law okay so these are the two syringe okay so this is when the plunger is pulled up so once the plunger is pulled up then the volume will increase and that will decrease the pressure okay when the plunger is pulled down the volume will decrease and that will increase pressure on my right hand side is the graphical representation of Boyce's law and these are the three ways in which we can represent this law graphically okay so now next let's move to the next law which is Charles law 
So basically, Charles law states will change in volume and temperature at constant pressure. Okay, and this law states that the volume of a fixed mass of gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature, provided the pressure remains constant. Let's move to the next slide. So we can state Charles law mathematically. Okay, so uh, stating Charles law mathematically, V is directly proportional to T. Okay, so of course this is just a relationship, so we can't work with this, right? So we have to introduce a constant so that this proportionality symbol will change to uh, equal to. So by the time we introduce a constant, we'll now be having V to be equal to KT, okay? Where K is a constant, or we can as well have V1 over T1 is equal to V2 all over T2, okay? Where V1 is the initial volume of the gas, T1 is the initial temperature, while V2 is the final volume of the gas, and T2 is the final temperature. So just like Boyce's law, we can as well still verify Charles law experimentally. Okay, so you take a glass container with a fixed amount of gas and immerse it in a water bath. So as the temperature of the water bath is gradually increased, the volume of the gas inside the container increases, demonstrating Charles law. So this is just the experimental setup for the verification of Charles law. And by this law, Charles concluded that the volume of a fixed mass of gas at constant pressure increases or decreases by 1 over 273 times the quantity at 0 degree Celsius for each 1 degree Celsius rise or fall in temperature so this is a graphical representation of charles law okay so from the graph we can see that at constant pressure the volume of a fixed mass of gas increases linearly with temperature so let's move to the next slide so on this slide we are going to be looking at the application of charles law so charles law find many applications in our day-to-day -day life okay here are a couple of examples one hot air balloon rise because the gas inside the balloon expands when heated, which decreases heat density and makes the balloon buoyant. Okay, another example is in cold weather, the capacity of our lungs decreases, making it harder for athletes to perform and for people to go jogging. This decrease in lung capacity is due to the contraction of the gases in the lungs due to the decrease in temperature. So let's move to the next slide. And also with the knowledge of uh, this Charles law, okay, we can be able to convert from degree Celsius to Kelvin. Okay, so the temperature on the Celsius case can be converted to Kelvin simply by adding 273. So zero degree Celsius is equal to zero plus 273 Kelvin. The lowest temperature possible here is minus 273 degree Celsius. Another temperature with each zero coinciding with minus 273 degrees Celsius is called Kelvin temperature scale, which is sometimes referred to as absolute temperature or thermodynamics temperatures. So this is where we draw the curtain for the preview of today's video, but you can watch the complete video by simply clicking on the link in the description below and that will take you to my school website. There you have to subscribe to enjoy or to watch the complete video. Now in the complete video we discuss about pressure or gay lusak law. We also talk about the application of Boyce's law to air bubbles in water body. We also talk about the explanations of the gas laws using kinetic theory and many more. I believe you enjoyed the preview of the video you just watched. If yes, please do not forget to hit the like button, click the subscribe button, and lastly, put on the notification bell to get notified as soon as we upload the next videos.